All right, guys, welcome back to Relegation Battle this week. Before we go into league action, let's quickly just recap the league action <laughs> break. So, Euro 2020 wise, Iceland, not Iceland, sorry, Hungary, Scotland, North Macedonia, and who's the last one? Oh, one other country qualified for Euro 2020 is all confirmed now. Who's all confirmed? Um, Nations League, I think Belgium, France, I want to say. Spain and Italy were the for final four for next year's Nations League tournament. Um, England wise beat Republic of Ireland 3 0 on Spain and we lost in Belgium 2 0 and beat Iceland 3 0 again after that. So, no more international break until February, March now, which is good. So, let's go into the league action now. Tom, we'll start with you. Massive win for you guys over Man City. Many people describe it as a Mourinho masterclass, you know, the parking the bus and countering style. Yeah. Another great display from Harry Kane. Let's also get a score sheet for you guys as well. I mean, what did you make of the game? Um, I thought it was <clears throat> perfect game plan. Uh, we knew we were going to do that, but I did not know that. I had a feeling if we were going to if we were going to win, it was obviously going to be a Jose masterclass, but. I think that was like a team masterclass. I've never seen us play so well defensively. We've always struggled defensively in any under any manager. And even Jose struggled. He's now implementing it on us, but last year we struggled. Uh, but that that was the best defensive performance I've ever seen um, us have against anyone in my whole life. Even like Aurier <laughs> looked unstoppable in that game. I don't know who was on his side, but he... He had him in his pocket and both centre backs. It was just a good um, team performance, and City couldn't really do much. Yeah, I mean, I think also the stats. Like, I think when you do give City that many chances and they don't score, that means that you are doing something right defensively as well. Yeah. Because for Team of City, they take quite to have that many shots and not score, then that bit you guys. Um, we're about a quarter of the season done our way through now. You guys are pretty much there at the top of the table. What do you think title-wise? Like, is it time to maybe start thinking, you know, we're in it. Let's take it a bit more seriously than we are, say, Europa League or a cup competition. I mean, we're going to take it seriously anyway, whether we're in the title race or not. The thing is, I don't, I don't like to say we're... Uh, I don't like to call it a title race yet. It's too early. Um, I, I can say that we are in it. But then there's probably still loads of other teams in it at the moment because we're um we've only just started. But it is a good sign that we're at the top of the pack at the moment. So I'm happy where we are, and I just think we need to take it game by game. Um, but Man City is the starting point to proving that we're um we're a tough team this year. We're not easy to beat. That team should be worried to play against us because I said. Said in the last podcast, we got hard fixtures coming up. I said this would be the test of um, if we are ready for that title race. And um, well, we've had a good start beating City, who are probably were if they were the one title favourites, to be honest. Um, either them or Liverpool. But um, yeah, it's a good start. Yeah, I think I'm going to be saying that because you've got Chelsea and Arsenal, if I'm correct, and you said you won yeah. six of those. Six points on those nine. Yeah. Got a good start. Got a couple of Europa League games as well. So definitely keeping an eye on Spurs. Jack, from a City perspective, I know you're a City fan, obviously, but it's not the best start for them. Especially, I mean, they gave Guardiola a new contract as well. But what's missing for them right now? What's stopping them from getting... I mean, Tottenham did beat them last year as well, but just in general, what's stopping them right now? I don't know. They don't seem the City of two years ago when they dominated that league and got 100 points. Teams were defending against them and they were just smacking them up 4-5-0. But now you get teams that are defending well, they can't break them down. With all the talent they have, they should be, I'm not saying like Tottenham defence is shit, but with the players they have, they should be at least maybe scoring a goal or creating clear-cut chances that I don't think they did. So, they're just not clicking for them. I feel like they're still... They have one dimension of play, that's it. Pep's never been the one of, okay, this isn't working, we'll go to plan B. It's just, we keep going until it works, sort of thing. So, but 
like Tom said, that game, if they won, they would have been back up there. But now, now they're even below us. So, yeah. Let's see what I happens. mean, you talk about that one dimensional play. When the team creates 20 plus chances in a game, 20 plus shots, we say, is that more down to the players now? Like, if you create 20 chances, you've got to finish them. Because that's almost like Pep's tactic is working, but the players aren't really finishing all of these chances. So, like, how much is it down to City players not? Finishing or just Spurs defending well as well. Well, yeah, you get. Uh, I mean, that the stat, the thing with um, shot stats, they don't tell you where they took the sh- where they take the shot from. You know, some players get frustrated that they can't break the defense down, so they just take shots from anywhere, and they go down on target, but it'll be literally straight at the keeper or it'll be a bubble shot. So, and I didn't get to watch the game, so I don't know how many chances they had in and around yeah, the box. But... I was gonna say that, but they, eh, if you would have watched, they had a lot of really good chances they should have scored. But we, okay, well, it was good saves or uh, good tackles. Well, with both of you saying that, then I guess, Joel, yeah, you're right. If that make over 20 shots or whatever you said, then surely that can't be down to Guardiola. He can't make them finish, you know. It's about their ability. So, it's weird because you don't, even though they have done, you don't, you don't want to say, oh, they should spend more because they spent loads. Yeah, you know they can't go. Oh, they'll go and get a top quality striker, but they've got fantastic players in attack. So maybe if they're just, I mean, last season they weren't at their best, but now it's like nearly like coming up to two seasons in a row where that final ball, that final product hasn't been good enough. Yeah, I mean, like I said, less than money. I think Ruben Diaz he started all right, but him and Ferran Torres maybe. Maybe it's just a matter of time, giving them more time, but well, I guess we're going to wait and see. Chelsea, we'll move on to Chelsea now. Another good weekend for you guys, getting a win over Newcastle. Abraham and uh, Ongo. Yeah, Ongo. Uh, what, yeah. Was, what do you think of the performance? Um, it wasn't the best performance, but it wasn't the worst performance. Um, I think one of the main positives is we didn't play well. Well, we played decent. But we didn't play amazing and we still managed to score two goals and keep a clean sheet at, um, at a stadium where normally Newcastle always, that's normally like one of our toughest games for some reason. Whenever we go there, they just turn into prime Barcelona. <laughs> like one year, they smacked us 3 0. But um, yeah, it uh, wasn't a great game. Werner in front of goal wasn't great, but um, he got a really good assist after. And then Tammy Abraham, <clears throat> he's really stepped up this season. Um, with all the competition in attack, he's been probably him. I say him, Mason Mount and Reese James. They've been pretty good considering all the players we signed. Obviously, we didn't sign a right back, so Reese James didn't have much competition. But but yeah, I think the overall game was good, but we could have done better and we could have really won the game like 6-0 if we were more clinical. I mean, I guess I have to ask you the same question. I asked Tom, are you guys in the title race? I don't know. I think I want to see us like next week against Spurs, and then obviously because we've got tough games coming up as well. So it's all good beating teams like Burnley, Newcastle, Sheffield United. But when we play the likes of Spurs and City and all of them kind of teams, then then I'll be able to decide if we're in the race or not. But for now, it looks good. <clears throat> yeah, and the other thing I want to point out for Chelsea is for a couple of months now, we've seen a lot of talk about Giroud and his situation at the club. Obviously, he wants to make the year 2020 squad. He scored seven goals for France as well. He's spoken, he's spoken about Werner and Abraham, the impact they're having right now. Mm. Death chance wants Giroud to leave and get more game time as well. Would you be open to Chelsea potentially letting him go in January? Um, yeah, because at the same time, you've got to think about the player and what he wants. Obviously, like, I like Giroud and what he's done for us. Like, he's done more for us than I expected him to. But, um, yeah, I think because obviously he wants to play the Euros and all that sort of stuff, he does probably need to leave so that he can play more game time or get more game time and force his way yeah. into the team. Yeah, fair enough. He's very close to being that France record, to be fair. Then, Jack, Man United did get the win against West Brom. Another game where VAR had a lot to say. So, say, I mean, it was off with the... West Brom penalty incident. I think that was just before your players got awarded one. 
Did you think it was a penalty? Because I don't think it was from the angle I saw. See, I spoke to a few people about this. That when I was watching the game and the referee went to the monitor, it was a bit weird because, in my opinion, the um, the angles that the referee saw were the angles that was in favour of Bruno. Yeah. So, from the angles he saw, it looked like you could see the ball move the move away as Bruno put his leg in, like he touched it. But then, from a yeah. different angle, it looks like he's hit the player and like. At the same time as the ball, I don't know, but it it's hard to say because if it's hit the ball and the player at the same time, it's not a penalty. But if he's hit the player before the ball, then it's a penalty. But yeah. it was very controversial because people yeah, say so I think I saw the one where like you can see it from the back of Bruno basically, which is the one I saw. Like, it doesn't look like a penalty to me, so maybe it's just that. Angles thing, but then obviously you guys got your penalty not too long after. Bruder did miss a first attempt, but scored eventually. And you got the win against. I mean, I heard Sam Johnston play quite well. I didn't watch the game, but I only watched the highlights. But it is three points, very important against, against these teams because I think that's just something that you might have lacked a bit last season, just yeah. getting points against the smaller teams. So, I mean, what did you think of the game in general then? I mean, it was a bit, a little bit what Tyrese said. We weren't, it wasn't the most, it wasn't our worst match this season, but it wasn't the best. You know, we started fairly slow, but then we picked up. And like you said, you didn't say you watched the game, but yeah, Sam Johnson were very good, made three or four very good saves that we should have scored from, fair enough, but they were good saves. And like you said, it's just important to get those three points in those games where you don't play well. Yeah. I don't know where you guys are on the table now, but I'm assuming you're top half. Yeah. Where was Pogba? Injured. He's injured again. Yeah. Well, speaking of injuries, I guess he's only right to go to Liverpool now. Seeing that during international break, there's a player injured every single day for them. But a very imp- impressive performance against the Leicester side that's been very consistent this year, to be fair. Or this season, should I say. Firmino gets his goal at Anfield. It's about time, I think. Jota continues his form as well, front of goal. And he's got the other one. I think it was an own goal. Own goal. Oh, he was own goal, John Yeah, I don't know how he managed that one. Yeah. But it's another impressive win for Liverpool now. And then, well, unfortunately for them, Navi Keita got injured as well. I mean, Tom, um, like we spoke about this, like, this season quite a lot, it's like Liverpool, it's still that Villa game, just like, a cloud over their heads right now because you still think about that when you talk about Liverpool this season when in fact they have been quitting, winning quite a few games so and then like you said it's a bit early for a title race and you said it's the only team but is Klopp right now with the injuries he's had how impressive was that victory against Leicester? Yeah <clears throat> um, well Leicester's up there so it was a bit of a weird game for me but I always wanted Leicester to win no matter what because they, they ain't going to win it they just won't. They ain't good enough, and we need Liverpool to drop off. I, I looked at that lineup and I thought that still looks strong. I was expecting like Fabinho not to play, and maybe I, I heard Robertson was injured as well. So I don't know. I think the Van Dijk one. I think where we we'll re, we'll, we'll see how it hits them is when they come up against the big teams. I I, I want to play them so bad now. Like it's a perfect time to play Liverpool. I think we got them coming up fairly soon so they, they'll probably have a couple of big players out I don't know how long the others are out for but I know Van Dijk's out for quite a while but um, yeah well Jot is a is a very good signing for them that it just shows you how important that one was to get over the line because if they didn't sign him they, they probably would be in trouble Salah's not injured he comes back so yeah. it's a good performance Leicester are a good team um, but they need to keep it going. I don't know who they've got coming up, but I know they've got us coming up fairly soon. So we'll just have to see how they do and if they can keep the remaining players fit. Yeah, I think Robertson was injured, so he missed like, Scotland's last international, but then he came back. Gomez is out for a long time now as well because of his injury, knee one. But I think the injury, we know how important Van Dijk was there when he came in. He changed the whole he took them to yeah. that next level, but 
feel like Allison's the one that they really need to take care of. Because yeah. the impact he has, I think, is not seen yeah. as much because he's obviously wasn't that big £75 million pound defender. But there's a massive difference between him and Adrian for that Liverpool side. So yeah. I think he's the player they need to keep safe the most in that defensive area. Right yeah, now. I agree because um, you. I mean, it's it's when you only notice it when he's gone. So when when Allison's there, you sort of take it for granted, and then when he's not there, you see um, Adrian going go fucking hell. He is shocking, and he's a massive yeah. difference. So I hope. Well, I don't hope Allison gets injured, but um, they need to make sure because he does get a couple of injuries. That that is one yeah. keeper that keeps getting, maybe not long term, but he comes out of a couple of games. So. That is one player they need to make sure they keep hold of because with that defence not being as great with Van Dijk out, they get that idiot of a keeper in goal, they're in trouble. Yeah, well, speaking of idiots, perfect time to go to the Arsenal game. So, Nicolas Pepe basically took all headlines because <laughs> idiot is the best way to describe what he did, really. Completely, I mean, I don't know what Aliossi said to him, but he's clearly just got a run through in his head at that point. Pepe's just reacted so badly. And once you, once you headbutt, like, a lot of people think, oh, Alias went down easily. But once you get that headbutt into your head, you're going to go down and get the other guys. Yeah, it's part of the game now, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. You've got to do it. I mean, we saw with the Marshall and Lamello what happened. It's yeah. going to happen now. It always has to be fair. But I mean, I've tried my best to defend Pepe a lot because for the price that we bought him for, he needs. Like I said, you know, this season is where he kicks on now on Arteta, but what he did yesterday cost the other 10 players a lot of, you know, we could have got something more from that game. We got a point, but it could have definitely been something more. Yeah. So, I mean, what do you, he's up for three games now. You're going to miss the Spurs game as well. I mean, Jack, what do you make of what he did? Uh, it was so stupid that that's like, he's not saying he's so in, inexperienced. I mean, he's not that young, but it was just so stupid. I was watching it, and then he just he turns around and just like even with without VAR, it was so stupid. But now even with that, he was never going to get away with it. I don't know what, like you said, I don't know what the guy said to him, but that just went straight through his head and was like, he seemed red. It was like it was yeah. I don't think the contact was much. But like you said, as soon as you yeah. put your head on someone, you're gone. It's terrible. Yeah. yeah, I think the rest spent like two seconds at the moment. I didn't realise, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, can't, he can't really be doing that. But then, I mean, I guess we could talk about the game in general as well. First off, it was Leeds creating a lot of chances, but not taking them too well. Like, they were only really testing us. I think Lennon had like one difficult save to make, but the rest were going off target. From us, it's the same old problem. We can't give a the chances he needs. Like, we weren't creating well enough and we weren't really until Saka came on and Nelson to be fair but Leeds this season out because we'll come back to Arsenal but Leeds have been another one of the inconsistent sides almost when it comes to results but this, the way they play and the style of play has remained the same they're not afraid to att- come at you attack you and we saw that again yesterday Ty how far do you think I know you, you have a bit of an agenda should we say against Bielsa as people go up in Lampard but I mean, they should have got three points yesterday. That was clear to see. But so at the end of the season, they don't have the same like, European competitions that they play because I think they are at the level that the big sticks are. They're definitely above us right now. So how far off the table can they finish there? Top ten, maybe. Um, I just think like they're so inconsistent. I don't think they won't get anywhere near the top six. Um, I reckon they'll finish ninth or tenth, just because they'll perform how they performed yesterday. But then they'll go and perform the next week how they performed against the likes of um, Crystal Palace. So, like, and yesterday they didn't even score when they had how many shots? Twenty-five shots. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like hit the post three times. Like, if you wanna try and challenge the top six, as people think Leeds can do but that's ridiculous um, then you need to obviously win games like that where you're having 25 shots and only like 5 or 6 are on target so I think I reckon they'll get top 10 but I don't think they'll challenge 
anyone for like top six or anything. Yeah, I think to be fair, we we do stand, you know, we talk about Leeds a lot, but we do have to bear in mind it is their first season back in the Premier course, so you always mm. expect that inconsistency a bit and ninth or tenth is a fantastic like, result for them in their first season back because yeah. I, mean, I know Wolves and Sheffield United did so well in the last few seasons coming up, but I think every like, promoted side's first objective is just not to go back down. So yeah. they yeah. mean to be considered in this competition is probably good for them. But going back to Arsenal, like it's the same problem. Like a lot of people talk about, it doesn't matter where you play and as long as you just need to give him chances. And the problem was when he was on the left, he was creating the chance for Lacazette, which he wasn't taking, obviously. But now, yesterday, there was just no chance being created for him. Pepe had a couple of shots, but it was poor from us. The passing yesterday was like FIFA 21 passing when I was watching it, man. It was dreadful from us. Like, Ceballos as well, normally one of our best passes, was playing so many passes out of drones. And it was crazy, but... Oh, yeah, and the Saka injury didn't help either, which I, I think that's why Chirney had a go at Alioski at the end as well, because he was involved with that Saka knee injury. Hopefully, he's not too serious. And then, obviously, the Pepe as well, which I think why Chirney went at him. But, Tom, do you think it's worrying that... I mean, I know he's done well in the Golden, is it Golden Boy, the award? The hard one? Yeah. Golden Boy. Yeah, Golden Boy. So, I know Saka finished quite high in that, but is it worrying that he's a player that's having such a positive impact in going forward rather than, say, a Pepe, a Willian, uh, or him and Nelson, really, they're having the biggest impact rather than the more experienced players. Um, yeah, because I relate this back to last year, actually, when um, he'd done it with Martinelli. I thought he was one of your best players. Um, and this was when he was fit. A lot of people say, oh, he was injured, but he wasn't because this was when he was fit and ready to play and he just would not start him. Saka, I thought, was the best player on the pitch for Arsenal, even though he played, what, 15, 20 minutes? He yeah. came on and he was running um, the Leeds defence like inside and out. He actually, he probably should have scored. But yeah. um, you, you create you, the link up with him and Bamiang while there's a man down um, was very good. Like, it was quite dangerous. He showed a lot of pace and um, trickery. Um, I think I think he's going to be a good player. Um, it is worrying because I think William shit. This is as simple as that. He's shit unless he plays against Tottenham. He always scores. But other than that, he's crap. Um, so I mm-hmm. understand why he puts William in because it's experience. But at the end of the day, age is just a number. If you if you've got the ability, just go for it. Like it's the same with Foden. Like he needs to start playing. Um, all these players need to start playing. The only team that's starting to play them is um, really Man United with Greenwood. I mean, Greenwood they haven't played him recently because he's been, he's been injured. But look at Greenwood when he has played. He's, he's having an impact on Man United. And I think um, Saka can do that. And I think Saka has done that when he was playing, you know. I don't, I don't understand why these players, just because they're young, they're getting dropped. Because they're, when they do play, they're in form. I remember Saka last year was, racking up quite a good assists in left back and he's not even a left back. So um I think if you if you fair enough if you've got good wingers then all right there, there's a fair case to say maybe Saka should be on the bench but no no offence but boy well, he said I like Pepe but he, he should be out of the team now. I can't see yeah. him being put back in and I've never liked Willian so I don't see why you would not just say this is your time now, Saka. It's, it's your um, it's your position, really, because you've got nothing else to lose and he's got so much to gain. So I think Arteta needs to reevaluate his um, starting eleven. to be honest. Yeah, I think one of the reasons Saka didn't play, though, because he played all three in the internationals. I think that was said, too. But, yeah, I agree with you. Saka was definitely our best player yesterday. I don't know with Pepe, I don't know whether he'll get the chance or Reese Nelson will get the chance because Nelson's done really well for us in Europe as well. I would definitely go with Saka over him, but either one I'll be happy. Both I'll be happier. Like I said, Martin was great for us as well last season. He's back in training now, not full training just yet, but he's, I'm excited for him to be coming back. So, yeah, it's for me, it's just too much pressure on our youngsters to perform at the level that 
Pepe should be falling out, William should be falling out. They got on this on this whole William thing, right? What did Arsenal fans expect? Like he's been well, doing this, I think like we did. We didn't expect like, oh, he's going to be fucking what we expected Pepe to be for 72 million. But we expected better than this, you know, like we expect him to at least contribute with a couple goals or assists more than like, he got two against Fulham, but since then I don't think he's done anything. And that's what we expected, like more than that. Not like, oh, we expect him to be fucking prime Messi, <clears> but I think, I know you didn't like Willian at Chelsea, but I think even you can agree that you do expect a bit more from him from the rather than what we've seen. Well, I mean, from the Willian I remember at Chelsea, um, he died off, I'd say, in Conte's last season. Yeah, I think after that, then he just wasn't great. Last season, most of his goals are from penalties, and that was after lockdown. Um, but, yeah, obviously, Arsenal fans, some Arsenal fans are saying that... Um, He's better than Ziyech and that he rejected us and stuff like that. So, you know, you're welcome to him. Yeah. <laughs> years, you got three years of that. But it's just a mad place somehow. I don't know who thinks ZX is like in worse than William, but that's the <laughs> opinion around that time somehow. Yeah. But definitely a worrying time for Arsenal. I wouldn't be surprised if we lose the Wolves and then beat Spurs somehow because for us, it's the big games that we seem to be motivated for. I don't know why, but our players just aren't motivated as much for like the last couple of games. But then when you play against a big team, for some reason, we play so much better. I don't know why, but they just seem more on it. But that is definitely waiting for us. So other results, Everton, the Richarlison back, but a good 3-2 and Fulham. Fulham missing another penalty quite badly as well. Ivan Cavaliero, he slipped and disguised it. But yeah, uh, Cavalier scored two goals. Charles, like I said, got assists pretty much straight away almost. Hamez as well, playing a couple of passes. Dean as well, getting two assists as well. So, just players that were doing well from the start still continuing their form, which is good for them. Uh, Be Burnley, Chris Pass playing right now, and Burnley only 1 0 from correct. Yeah. Chris would have scored for them. That's going on. Um, I think while well, the team played. See, we talked about the overall. Uh, I think they're getting relegated. Yeah, highly scored his first ever goal from outside the box. And it was a decent goal, but it's not looking good for Sheffield at all. Mm. I don't know why Sander Berger went there, but he should leave. Um, yeah, I guess just European football wise, you've got Ace Milan, Zat, and he's got 10 goals in six games now for them. Top score in Syria, Milan at top. Maybe he's the one to sort of get them back to where they should be or were. Uh, Real Madrid drew with Villa, Villa, Villa Real, I think, 1 1. Barcelona lost Atletico Madrid. I don't know if I saw the goal, but Testegan's tried to just sweep the keeper at Noya, but Carrasco's got there just before him and not make him and scored from like four yards out, which was very embarrassing for them. Messi has be actually not been including the Champions League squad for this week as well. I'm not sure if it's injuries or anything, but he's not in the squad. Um, Munich drop points. 1-1 one, one draw for them. Dortmund won 5-2. Haaland scored four goals, yeah. didn't he? Haaland yeah. scored four goals. And on the morning, he's announced the scoring boy, <laughs> which I think we would we would agree in that last video as well, that he was the best one, of the best youngsters in the world. I think Ansu Fati was second, Davies third, Sancho fourth. Which I guess yeah. you can all argue for them to be up there. So maybe Sancho a bit higher, just on recent form, he's not quite there. But definitely four great players. Um, yeah, like I said, I managed to remember Stacker being quite up, up there, but um, I think that's pretty much all the football. Oh, Monaco came back from 2 0 down to be PSG and Fabregas. Fabregas. Yeah. I don't know if that's what like, yeah. BT brother, like a highlight reel, just Fabregas in the second half, like five minutes long, yeah. just like pretty much all his touches. And yeah, it was just fantastic for him to watch him like that again. It's the same thing with PSG, though, isn't it? Every year, like. They can't do it in league and hard to come in for them doing the Champions League. Like, I think they got lucky to get to the finals last year, but I mean, it's just not good enough. That's why like, I think Mbappe has to leave. Big Neymar has to leave. Mm. I see like a lot of people saying, "Oh, Mbappe is too disrespected." Yeah, because he's at PSG. Like, he's getting a league where he's good enough to play. He's good enough to play for Real Madrid. You know, so, like, 
just get him out of that shit league, man. That's just <laughs> that's just my opinion. It's not good enough for anyone. That's just my opinion. But yeah, so back to European football this week as well. Champions League, Europe League, back again for the next three weeks as well. So not going to help anyone scheduling, but that's the way it is. Nothing's been done about it. Five subs still haven't been brought in for us as well. I guess the only positive is from December second onwards, fans are back in allowed back in the stadium for now. So the way it works is, if it's a tier one city, so it's not too bad, you can have up to four thousand fans. If it's a tier two city, you can have up to two thousand fans. So. I, mean, I don't know yeah. how, why it's happening because the cases are still going up, but Boris just said, yeah, let's, let's do it. So I think for the North London derby, fans may be allowed. Yeah, but, but that's probably just pointless because we're, we're in London. Yeah. And like one of the worst places. That's going to be like tier three. Yeah, I think it's three, a tier, it? if it's tier three, then no one will be allowed to go. But right. Yeah. But even if they are, I think it'll probably just be home fans as well. I don't think away fans will be allowed to travel. So no. I don't know if that'll give a bigger home advantage, what we'll do for players, but then you wait and see. But yeah, that is all for this week. Have a nice. Before I think it's time to talk. I think it's time we sit down and just say what's going on. I think we should